you can count on. They have served the state they love as well as their husbands and have left their own mark on Texas history. They NBC Fox 7. You're watching KTBC Fox 7. News you can count on. They have served the state they love as well as their husbands and have left their own mark on Texas history. They are the first ladies of Texas. I had the chance to sit down and talk with several of them during an event in Houston saluting their support of volunteerism. Tonight we begin with a former first lady who was part of one of the most tragic chapters in our nation's history. In tonight's Fox 7 Extra, former first lady Nellie Conley. I didn't make speeches while John was governor, and my excuse was he makes enough speeches for both of us, <laughs> and he did. I know Brill Connolly, or Nellie as friends and Texans call her, still has that keen sense of humor she was well known for. Although she didn't make speeches, she campaigned hard for her husband John Connolly when he ran for governor. She became first lady in 1963 and loved it. But just going around the state, every place in Texas and uh, just having your husband, handsome John Connolly, governor of Texas. I just liked the whole thing. What she didn't like were some of the negative things said about her husband, but she says it was part of politics. Now this part of the garden is the part that Mrs. Connolly did. On a beautiful spring day, visitors to the mansion may linger here in the gardens. This is where Mrs. Connolly left her mark. We had a chain link fence around a little area that was kind of a uh, cutting garden, but with no organization, no anything. And so I thought, well, I'll see if I can build gardens for the mansion. And build them she did, with help from garden clubs across the state. Her daughter was married here. Although there were many happy times for the Connollys, they were also part of a tragic time in our nation's history. November 22, 1963, Governor Connolly was shot along with President Kennedy in Dallas. Although she'll never forget that day, Mrs. Connolly says the memories don't consume her anymore. I just don't dream about it, you know, and I used to dream about it, and, and it would just go over and over in my mind all night, every night, like a phonograph record played over and over again. Uh, but you learn pretty soon. Um, Never to forget it, but to push it back in the back part of your mind uh, where it doesn't just consume you all the time. She says the day they brought the governor home from the hospital was the first day she called the mansion home. Our life at the mansion was pretty neat. I'm glad we had the experience. Mrs. Connolly is currently involved in the MD Anderson Breast Cancer Center, which is scheduled to open this summer. Tomorrow night at 10, we'll talk with the first lady who went searching for pieces of Texas history and brought them home to the mansion. Well, a day of stormy weather for some part. You're watching KTBC Fox 7, news you can count on. No other first lady is as qualified to be governor. That's how some Texas Republican leaders once described a first lady, Rita Clements. Although she never ran for office, Mrs. Clements had the chance to serve as first lady twice. During her tenure, she had many projects, but there's one she'll be remembered for the most, preserving Texas history. In tonight's Fox 7 News Extra, Texas First Ladies, Mrs. Rita Clements. A woman ahead of her time. While most first ladies disappeared into the background after their There's husbands were elected governor, Rita Clements and, uh, didn't. She's been described as her husband's closest advisor and trusted ally. There was a lot of fun and excitement and, and the people that, that you were able to be with and met and, and to be right in, in the forefront of issues. I miss that. And she tackled the issues head on. Politics came naturally to her. Coming from a long line of Republican leaders in Kansas, and in 1952, she campaigned door to door for Dwight Eisenhower. She says she enjoyed campaigning. The most memorable, her husband's 1978 campaign. We spent the whole summer 
out in rural Texas. Each one of us had a station wagon and went in different directions, and we literally organized all the counties in Texas that summer. It's been said she was the reason Bill Clements was elected governor. Mrs. Clements will be remembered for many things, her work in education, volunteerism, and tourism, but what she'd like to be remembered most for is her work on preserving the mansion. This couch was Governor Pease's couch. He was the first governor to live here. And I think this is one of the ones that the Clements tried to find when they were restoring the house. Well, we were able to collect some pieces of, of historic furniture that uh, we, um, they're an important part of the, of the governor's mansion collection. And I, I think we, we were very pleased to find some Texas historic pieces. A group founded by Mrs. Clements, Friends of the Governor's Mansion, keeps the historic home in good shape. Mrs. Clements is still busy preserving Texas history. These days, she's involved in the Capitol Restoration Project. Tomorrow night at 10, we'll talk with a former First Lady who was instrumental in creating one of the largest dropout prevention programs in the country. Crystal clear night, you can just count the stars. Meteorologist Troy Kimmel will take what makes it unique. And I think the... You're watching KTBC Fox 7. News you can count on. In the early 1800s, first ladies here in Texas had a more decorative role. Today's first ladies are expected to know the issues and have projects. Linda Gale White says she was on the cutting edge of the changing role of the mistress of the mansion. One of her projects while first lady is still at work, helping Texas children stay in school. In tonight's Fox 7 News Extra, former first lady Linda Gale White. An admirer once said of Linda Gale White, if she has a fault, it she doesn't like to say no to anybody. Now out of political life, the former first lady says she's learned to say no. She says she doesn't miss politics, but admits there are some things she does miss. I miss the excitement, I miss the intrigue, I miss, uh, you know, 10 jillion things going on at one time. Mrs. White says she knew it was going to be a busy four years. After winning the governor's race in 1982, White says she thought things might slow down for her, but she learned quickly that wouldn't be the case. Suddenly, the press descended upon me and said, okay, now what are you gonna do? And I thought, do? I thought I'd just done it. So, you know, it took me a while to, to realize what I wanted to focus on. All first ladies pick projects they want to focus on. White says after many years of primarily playing hostess, Texans started expecting more from their first ladies. People expect first ladies to know the issues, to get involved in the issues, to uh, have a platform, so to speak, or a, an agenda that she is concentrating on. And, and um, I think we'll see that more and more and more as we're seeing it with uh, Hillary Clinton. Unlike Hillary Clinton, Mrs. White chose a less controversial agenda, education. A former vocational education teacher at Johnston High School, White helped launch the statewide dropout prevention program, Communities in School. You're building self-esteem and pride one step at a time. And when you do that, you've got a good student and a healthy student who's ready to get out and and you know make it on his own and you, you see that with this program it's what i like about this program you see it every day the impact and the difference you're having in a, in a child's life linda gale white still serves on the local and national boards for communities and schools tomorrow night at 10 two first ladies in the same family one the former first lady of the united states the other the first lady of texas well, if it wasn't April, you'd think summer was here. Meteorologist Troy Kimmel will tell us how long the warm weather is going to last. His forecast is up next. You're watching KTBC Fox 7. News you can count on. One political family in Texas can boast having a first lady of the United States and a first lady of Texas. Barbara and Laura Bush. One continuing to serve her country as a champion for volunteerism and literacy, the other reminding us of the rich resource we have in Texas writers, artists, and libraries. In tonight's Fox 7 News Extra, Barbara and Laura Bush. Former First Lady of the United States, Barbara Bush. Please welcome the First Lady of Texas, Laura Bush. 
A historical gathering for Laura Bush and seven other former First Ladies of Texas and the United States, honoring their dedication to volunteerism. They're so great. It's so great to meet those and be with those other women who you know came before you. What an incredible gathering. Like the women before her, Laura Bush is working to leave her own special legacy. State Agency Libraries of Texas, in appreciation to First Lady of Texas, Laura Bush. A retired librarian, Mrs. Bush is busy promoting the importance of libraries and a natural tie-in, her work with Barbara Bush on the literacy campaign she started while in the White House. This very month we have our celebration for reading and we're also starting, a, or have started, thanks to the present First Lady of Texas, a uh, Texas Literacy Initiative too. Since leaving Washington, Barbara Bush has established the Foundation for Family Literacy, which has donated money to the Literacy Initiative. The fight against illiteracy is a family affair for the Bushes, and so is baseball, something Barbara Bush says she has more time to enjoy. In the last week, I've been to five baseball games, three in Arlington, two in Houston, and George and I are traveling all the time. Laura Bush says the times they spent in Washington with the first couple prepared them for life as the first family of Texas. I don't think we realized it. I don't think we had any idea how much we were really learning, but they were great role models for us. I think Barr Bush is just fabulous. Over the years, Mrs. Bush says her mother-in-law has only given her one piece of advice. Don't criticize your husband's speeches, advice she says she didn't follow during a 1978 campaign for Congress. He said, tell me the truth. How was my speech? And, and I said, well, it really wasn't great. And he drove into the garage wall. <laughs> Well, Laura Bush is making a lot of speeches of her own these days, and Barbara Bush is still one of the most sought-after speakers in the world. They're remarkable women. Yes, they are. Has spring ended early in Central Texas? Well, it seems like it.